Hello and welcome to The Right Idea, where we discuss the people, policy, and politics that drive Texas. I'm your host, Brian Phillips, Chief Communications Officer at the Texas Public Policy Foundation. With me not today is my usual co-host, uh, Derek Cohen, but we do, in fact, have an upgrade. Welcome to the <laughs> Ladies of Sweet Tea. Hi, Yay. Brian. Thanks Hello. for being here. Um, Sweet Tea is a new podcast recently launched from TPPF that discusses the policy, politics, and culture from an admittedly younger and less male perspective than we generally have on this show. Uh, by way of my my own um, uh, shameless plug, of course. Um, if you're not subscribed to our new newsletter called The Post, uh, we'd really like you to be subscribed to that. It's kind of a rundown of everything that's going on in the week, the stuff that TPPF is working on, our commentaries. Um, there's exclusive content on there. We have a column from me, and we always do something fun kind of at the end. Um, and you can find that at uh, texaspolicy.com slash the post. Okay, now for some more shameless plugging of TPPF materials. Um, my guests are the hosts of Sweet Tea, which you can find on uh, on their own uh, YouTube channel, on their own TPPF YouTube channel. Uh, first, we have Ariana Silva. She is the videographer at TPPF. Ariana was originally born in Austin, but spent most of her time in, or most of her time growing up in the Rio Grande yes. Valley. Mm -hmm. She is, I mean, if there was only something politically going <laughs> happening on. Happening over there. Yeah, yeah, happening in the nothing valley. Nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing to talk about uh, down there, which we might get to later in the show. Uh, she's a graduate graduate of the vaunted radio, television, and film program at mm -hmm. the University of Texas. Hook em horns. Yep, hook em. <laughs> and, and dedicated her career to using video and story to reclaim the culture and reach younger generations which is a lot of what I want to talk about here today. Taylor Dawson is the creative director here at the foundation. She was a digital, previously she was the digital director for the Republican Study Committee in Washington, D.C. Um, she was worked on a um, bunch of different projects. You may have heard of one um, a few years ago called the Conservative Playbook, which I know mm -hmm. for a lot of movement folks uh, was it was um, a big report uh, put out about how to how to win um, uh, conservative uh, national policy. Uh, appalled at how the liberal agenda has infiltrated everything from pop culture to <laughs> academia, she helps shift the cultural narrative through design, presenting an opposing view in mainstream society. She is a native Texan uh, and graduated from Dallas Baptist University. Welcome, ladies, to The Right Idea. Thank you. Thanks. Wow. I, I want to take whatever you wrote for my intro and just put it on my LinkedIn because that <laughs> that made me sound pretty I'll just cool. do a live to camera after this, you know, and I'll just do <laughs> your, your promo. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Yeah, <laughs> we'll honestly. take it. Uh, well, that'd be great. Well, I thought it, you know, we, we do talk about the policy and politics, the kind of, you know, current events and things like that in Texas. But with Derek gone um, and us all being communications professionals, I thought this would be a really cool idea not to just talk about the policies and things that we all support and kind of what's going on in the world and, and what all that means, but, but really kind of get behind the scenes maybe pull back the curtain a little bit about how we do what we do and why we you know p um, create certain products like this show and others um, and, and and ways in which we distribute you know our policies our positions our storytelling and all of that I want to get behind that um, in particular but first uh, I want each of you to, to tell us a little bit in your own words we'll maybe start with Ariana about uh, about the new podcast and kind of what you're doing there with sweet tea and what you're trying to what you're trying to accomplish there yeah, so whenever I was in college, it was the first time I actually had an interest a little bit in Texas politics, where I was going to school here in Austin, and so it was the first time I was able to really actually see some of the policy happen and the people that I was around, but I felt like I was a little bit behind the curve in certain ways, and so it was hard to like figure out what what I... Um, what I believed and mm -hmm. try, like trying to figure out like what those policies are and then how do I fit that into my everyday life being a conservative woman on the most liberal university in the state of Texas <laughs> and so even some whenever, the country in the yeah, 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 outside of I think, Stanford right? or, or Berkeley yeah I think Berkeley has this beat but we're, I, we're at least in the top 10 for that um, so it's it was really hard to find people who I culturally culturally related to online who were you know in the younger generation who had similar values to me and then see how they were able to succeed in their lives and so I think that this is going to be a really good podcast where we're talking a little bit about our personal lives, but then also bringing in people who are policy, not only policy experts, but just subject matter um, experts sometimes in other areas. Um, and I, I think that's something mm -hmm. that like was an inspirational piece that was missing from whenever I was in college. Taylor, yeah. this is sort of your brainchild. Like, what was the impetus uh, for wanting to do a podcast like this? Because it's not you don't you don't market it. You know, this is for women. Although yeah. it clearly is kind of yeah. has that that perspective. So, what was kind of the the motivation for it? Yeah, I think for me, it was just the space culturally is just so like taken over by like the woke liberal agenda. Ari's in film, like we see it everywhere, see it everywhere in design. 
And it just gets so tiresome of like, this does not represent me. I do not want to be a part of this. Like all the work I had to study in school was often very left leaning, even though I knew, okay, they're like way better than what I am right now as this little conservative, but I'd love to get to their level and then not do those super annoying (laughs) woke things. And so if I was feeling that in college as a creative, there had to be other people out there. And so the cool thing about this podcast is that we take people who usually started in a field, like a school teacher, and then they saw a problem and decided that they wanted to make a difference. And for them, it was through policy. And I think the cool thing about their story is that they will be able to identify with the audience and say like, hey, I was that school teacher. Mm -hmm. I did see that problem you're seeing right now. And this is how... I chose to shift it. This is what you can do right now in your community. And on top of all of that, it's like we tap into the cultural side and we talk about fun things that are happening in the world, like movies and shows. (laughs) There may be a whole episode on the Barbie Yeah, Yeah, I'm like, like, don't say the word Barbie. I've said it too many times. Um, But I do think it is, I think it's really interesting, um, you know, that that you you put it that way because, you know, I mean, I come from the world of like being a press secretary and like, you know, being in in political campaigns and you guys come from the communications world, like you said, as a creative. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you do design, you do film. Those are not industries generally. I remember, Taylor, you telling me one time you went to kind of an industry conference and you kind of had to, you know, like, I hope people don't find out that I'm, <laughs> you know, from TPPF. Did you experience this? I probably just fresh out of college. You've been a couple so, years out of college. Yeah, but well, in college, I think it was still um, <clears throat> whenever I was around people, that was especially how it, how it was and in my classes. And so originally to be able to make friends, I wouldn't um, say my political viewpoints or my positions on that kind of stuff. And then um, as time went on and when I finally did start doing that, especially the film people who knew me from before, I would say anything. They were like you're conservative, but you're so nice. And just like <laughs> shocked that you can have a different point of view at all and still be a good person. Like that just wasn't an option it's in funny. their head. So, um, but the other thing that helped me come out of my shell was early in my college career, I joined a conservative organization and it was mostly because I was like, okay, I know my values are, I don't know where I feel about healthcare, but generally I believe in like the constitution and like the first and second amendment and Mm. i just don't want to introduce myself with my pronouns all the time so (laughs) that was that like that that must make you a fascist if you care about Uh, the first apparently right and science so i joined this organization and really early on i got doxxed and so after that happened and not much really came of it i was like well i obviously well i can't really work in the film industry completely now but Mm. I think it's time to start looking at some other stuff if this is the divorce that they're going to throw at me. Taylor, um, one of the things, I mean, one the kind of message I'm hearing here is that instead of, you know, being in these industries that are dominated by the left, either getting frustrated and getting out of the industry or or worse, being essentially indoctrinated mm-hmm. and being assimilated uh, into it, y'all have found kind of inspiration in saying, you know, no, we're go- we can actually, we want, this is our passion, this is what we want to do, uh, and we're going we're gonna to use these skills that we learn uh, to go and spread more of a conservative message. Yeah, yeah. And that's inspiring rather than uh, discouraging. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. We just like, we, I think, are very strong. I don't know if you're firstborn, but like, yeah, like (laughs) we just like, we're like, no, like, why not just step in here and like have a conversation? Because, you know, I think conservatives get painted, especially conservative women get painted with this view of like, you know, they're usually white, they're usually upper middle class, you know, maybe they're married. And it's just kind of like this, like very unrelatable person that Mm -hmm. they stick us into. And it's like, oh my goodness, like we are so different. We sit on the couch, we hang out, we have girl talk, like we have thoughts about different things that are in culture right now that are opposing, but not necessarily derogatory, like with the Barbie movie, like we can say, We love so many parts about it, but these are the parts we really don't like about it. And it's a very balanced conversation. Okay. um, Well, that's the why. I wanted to kind of get everybody's uh, background on kind of why um, it is that you guys started the podcast. Um, What are you hoping to bring uh, with the podcast? Like, what do you want to bring, Ariana, like to the audience? Like, in terms of the content, like the what part of of the podcast? What are you looking to bring that's going to kind of separate yourself from other podcasts? Yeah, I think that there's um, a lot of talk shows right now or just different girl conversations that are happening, um, but there's nothing where they share our values. And so I think it's just adding that that side of like, I'm looking Uh for someone who I'm able to relate to something that I can aspire to. And this is happening with people who I don't have to change who I am and like my core beliefs in Mm -hmm. order to do that. And Mm -hmm. so for me, it's just that really inspirational piece that's missing um, in the marketplace right now. 
Yeah. I, and and Taylor, I know you're really keyed into the sort of the cultural side of things. Mm-hmm. You know, what what kind of issues and things are you going to be talking about on uh, in in terms of the you know instead of just the hardcore policy and politics that yeah. you know I feel like there's like a million podcasts that do that. Yeah, that's what I really like about this one is that you guys kind of get into more of the you know what it's like to walk out the doors and and be a conservative in in Austin or be yeah. a con, you know conservative in Texas. Yeah, so we have different segments, and one of those is pop culture with principles, and so it's <laughs> where we will literally just talk about whatever is happening that all of us girls are talking about off camera we're like just bring it on camera because this is what makes it relatable this is what makes it the talk show vibe where we're all hanging out and our audience can relate to us and so we'll pull through that and offer an opposing view to say like literally the view the tv sh- or the show it's just like no like that is just so triggering to hear all of that but we're kind of I'm guessing like maybe a, probably your audience isn't watching the view anyway so you would probably have to yeah, explain true. exactly so the view is <laughs> um okay so let's let's peel the curtain back a little bit and, and go a little bit broader uh in terms of why we create these types of products anyway and i know um you know ari ari's our, our videographer here so video is a huge is a huge part of how um everyone is communicating now um just to brag on you guys a little bit just in under in, during session alone so starting in january through the end of session uh our film team and jefferson's included here i always like to reference him yes uh, definitely the, the man behind <laughs> the, the curtain here um but our film team created over 400 432 different video products just during session alone um yes. and it's these guys i mean i've i've adopted their and their uh, entire uh, ethos on this i've you know i always tell people around here if you're not making video you're not talking to people because mm-hmm. that's just the way uh that it's going so tell us a little bit about why you guys are so invested in and everything has to be video well part of it is just the fact that that's where people are mm-hmm. right so if you're like you keep your your phrase if you're not making a video you're not actually talking to the people and um the other piece of it for me especially is i if i was wanting to get involved like i was in college but i don't understand anything about the process or what's happening over there there's a barrier to entry for that Mm -hmm. and so it lowers a little bit of that barrier to entry it helps you shape the conversation um so it's just it's speaking to people who otherwise wouldn't have access to this information and your and the videos are not just you know staring at camera just, talking yes, tell us a little correct. bit about kind of the content yeah, so and why you guys for me, choose a, that. A part of what we're looking at is well what what's the kind of thing that people are latching on to now and what what's the type of uh the trends that you're seeing on youtube that people are wanting to click on and it's keeping your retention rate longer um or if we have like a, a lot of information we have information to distill but it's in a 15 minute video we're seeing trends that like, okay, well, not everyone's going to watch all the way through that 15 minute video. So we can be really strategic with, um, with either if we do want to do something longer, the information we need needs to be before a certain point, or we just like figure out ways to say, hey, people are going to be more likely to watch a two and a half minute video. So let's try to make content that's fitting within that time frame, so we make sure that our message is getting across yeah, the we, best way possible. We, you guys have done the research on this, but and I've, I've heard of it, but it's I mean it's fascinating. You know, the how do you get people past like the 15 second mark? Right? Yes. How do you get and so you does get that them mean they got a flashy seconds. video? And then we're even now trying to like, we're figuring out some more trends. Like if you start on someone's face rather than on a clip of B-roll, they're more likely to watch a little bit longer. So we're tr- like, even now it's like changing some of our strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and Taylor, on the design side of things, this is something that people are probably a little bit less familiar with, mm-hmm. right? I mean, people know, people watch videos, but design actually, I mean, there's a, there's a way to send a message through design as well. Um, and even a conservative message or, mm-hmm. or, or a way to catch people's attention so so kind of how do you how do you do that and 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 you know help get people's attention on things so that they can be you know have the yeah. message delivered to them that we're trying to get out yeah so i like to say like i'm just kind of the glue to all of these different pieces and i love that tppf is all about like educating the audience and making them more informed and so Whenever I approach my graphics and my visuals, it's always like, how can we best communicate to them with words and visuals? And so it's different from film in the sense that you really have to be controlled with how much text you have. You need to be controlled with the images that you use (laughs) and with the colors. Like we can't just keep- No white backgrounds. Yeah, like we can't just keep like (laughs) slapping on all these like clip art things and expecting people to like read these giant paragraphs on like the super tiny square. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people are using phones to read everything now, and so yeah. you, I mean, you, you can't. What looks good on a web page, you know, on your on your 16 inch screen, is not going to be the same thing that's on your phone, and you have to adjust for that, right? Yeah, and then even with that, like the marketing side of it, of like making sure you have the right words, and that's where like our two things really combined into, I think, like the best parts of social media, where you know you have like this video that's 
30 seconds. And then if we can just pull one pithy line from there and just make it really visually enhanced and eye catching, you know, that's going to be something that, you know, it reinforces the message. Yeah. yeah. Ten words. And they're like, yes, I identify with that. Like, that's so mm-hmm. easy. You know, the 120 characters or whatever. Um, a lot of the reason why we have to do this, why, why we're doing this proactively is because we can't get a fair shake in the mainstream media, right? Like the mainstream media will write a you know 1,500 word story. They mm-hmm. might call TBPF to get one line just to say that they've done their due diligence, right? Like yeah. to say, oh yeah, we can serve. And, uh, and I won't go into a big tirade against the media. I did a podcast with Sam Pohl and, uh, and Sherry Sylvester on her podcast, Ninth in Congress, another shameless plug for our, our, our products. Um, so you can get all my hot takes on, on <laughs> anti-media hot takes there. Um, but that's a real problem. And that's part of the reason why we're doing what we're doing, Ari. And and one of the things that I think you guys do so well is you start with the story, mm-hmm. right? Like I think a lot of conservatives, and this is my own criticism of, of conservative movement. They'll start with facts. Facts and figures and numbers. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, and I'm always, you know, well, if, unless the number tells the story or a number gets you to, you know, yeah. lock in, you really need, you need characters, you need villains, you need victims, you mm-hmm. need heroes, you need to tell the story of this thing is wrong. You need to see a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, exactly. And, and we, like, I think in the conservative movement, a lot of people just say the numbers and figures, but that's not the way that everyone thinks. And I, it sometimes helps to personify who this is. Mm-hmm. So it's not just this number of people are being impacted. It's this particular person right now is being hurt in this way. And let's like show you what what's actually happening here. So how do you go about finding those stories? And then maybe you can use one an example of a, a recent you know video that we have or whatever that tells. That well, one story. example is um, what's happening with our um, our CAF uh, Institute or, or the Center for the American Future. So the litigation. Yes, sort, the litigation yeah. arm of the Policy Foundation. Um, one thing that they're really good at is making sure that they're um, whenever they're wanting to do messages they're always like what is the person here going through that we're trying to fix like what's the injustice being done Mm -hmm. and how how are we going to tell the public about about what's happening here and bring light to that so recently we did um in san marcos there's a property rights case that's happening where this family has um a house that they have and it has a um a metal grate on the outside it's just decorative um and it's a historical home that has this grate that has a letter z on it that stands for the last name Zimmerman, who had clan ties and um, a very, he was like mayor of San Marcos. He had, um, but he like had showed Birth of the Nation at his, at his, um, Movie at his theater. Yes. And all of his friends, like one of the friends death quotes was even like about how they were all back in the clan back in those days. So um, this family <laughs> thinks that this doesn't align with their values. It's their property. They're not getting any um because it's a historic district, but not a historic home. There's no tax, um, but any Benefit, like benefits yeah. coming to them, nothing like that. But the city is keeping them from removing this from their home. Mm-hmm. And those are the kind of stories where you can say like, oh, this is like at a clear level of injustice where this per- people are not able to have a home yeah. that represents their values. Like a home is supposed to be where you feel safe and it reflects your family. And that's not something that they're able to have. So when we film this, we, we go to there and we just sit with them and let them tell us about what what that means to them and what home means to them. I always tell our litigation folks, you know, you guys literally have stories. I mean, you yeah. have plaintiffs or you have defendants or you have the people who are literally sitting next to you. Let's just go, let's just go and tell our stories. Sometimes, and, and you know, you're talking about a property rights case. If we were just talking about the, the ins and outs of, you know, legal property rights or whatever, mm-hmm. most people, you know, eyes glaze over. Like we're not going to be talking about the takings clause. When right. To, <laughs> yeah, to exactly. But, but now you're talking about, you know, a, a family who's got this racist symbol, maybe mm-hmm. not racist symbol, but it certainly represents represents somebody who does not share their values and they can't take it off their home because yeah. the San Marcos City government says, oh, well, you know, we, we don't Or we the don't historic to. commission says that. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Taylor, again, the storytelling side of things, yeah. um, you know, conservatives, I think, are getting a little bit better at it. Um, but what would, what advice would you have, you know, in terms of starting out for, you know, for particularly for like conservative movement groups or yeah. for individuals or, or, or activists, you know, about the importance of storytelling? Yeah. So... I think storytelling comes also with like the side of like our networking and how we need to just embrace others and host happy hours and parties and movie nights and just really get the conversation going because I think you'll meet the right people to get out there. And then from there, whatever your medium is, if you're a great writer, Mm -hmm. write compelling stories that are, you know, maybe you get into like the not or the fiction or the nonfiction realm and you start working there. You're not just writing op-eds. Maybe for film, you do something like we did with Forging Texas and you don't just, you know, find stories of current day. You go and you tell stories Mm -hmm. of the past to make sure they're not forgotten. And, you know, for me, for visuals, it's like, 
maybe I make like a really cool poster for the future president and maybe that goes <laughs> viral or whatever, just like the Obama poster did, or, you know, and then, and then they read it with Hillary Clinton and then they read it with, um, yeah, the left is so much, I think it's so much better at icons. They're and so visually like creative. Yeah. Yeah, 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 pretty visually creative that we have a lot to learn um, uh, from them. Um, um, so what I'm hearing is, you know, community helps out a lot because, yeah. you, you know, trying to find those stories. I think, you know, doing podcasts like this, getting our information out, someone will watch your podcast and go, man, I maybe I have a story to tell. Yeah. Maybe I can be a guest uh, on there sometimes. There's people like me out there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, Taylor, I want to get your, you know, in terms of the platforms, right? Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, you, you do um, all of our creative designs but you don't just do one design for Twitter you know or one design for everything you yeah. know there's there you it's not only just the platforms that we use but the types of mediums that were uh, talk a little bit about how you how you uh, kind of start with your uh, like how you start to figure out what 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 looks good on which platform and the importance of being sort of diverse and, Ooh, so I get to get nitty-gritty into some of the design <laughs> yeah, stuff I feel like I never get to talk about this I, I, well, you know part of this podcast what I want to do is because we do have conservative activists that watch this yeah. show is that you know, we're trying to say, you know, this this is something we should be we should really be exporting out through to other conservative groups and mm-hmm. movements. I mean, as much as I love having both of you guys <laughs> here and we want to have all the cool stuff and all yeah. eyeballs on TPPF, it really is important to get this out there that other groups can be doing this too and that it's not super expensive and yeah. that they can they can handle it. Yeah. Make conservatives cool again. That's there we go. that's <laughs> my motto. Um so I think the biggest thing with like graphic design design that the conservatives really lack on is that they don't pull the personality into any of their products. Like we are so good about putting personality into our op-eds and our pictorials. And like, I feel like we're much better in that, but with these like more modern things like graphic design, you, they just kind of slap on red, white, and blue and expect it to like communicate a message. But really it's like, what font are you choosing? The topography, like, is it something very feminine? Is it something very sophisticated? Like a lawyer is going to use a different font for their logo than, you know, we would for a very feminine podcast. And so you have to make sure you're communicating visually to your audience in the best way. And I think for other organizations out there, you know, you can utilize products like Canva and you need to just get your basics for design principles and and make sure that you are showing the audience, not just like here is an image of a iced tea and here is a font and we are sweet tea it's like no like you need to get the feeling in there yeah you need to be very practical and thoughtful about is there like a like a graphic design for dummies or anything that's there like a a quick should be (laughs) there should be i think honestly the biggest thing that can that you know someone can do in the movement is just like get out there and start noticing what's happening like don't just shy away from the left and be like oh like i don't want to be anything like them so i'm just going to put my hand up it's like you have to acknowledge that they are good at what they do and so really look at it it before us like i think they're 10 years ahead of us because mm-hmm. they started like prioritizing this 10 years before we did. Right. Yeah, so, that's another good mm-hmm. thing. You have to prioritize it. And so look at it. Go on Pinterest. Go on, you know, Instagram. Look at all these different accounts and really see like, wow, I like that. Why do I like it? Mm-hmm. And then implement that's that. That's why I, somebody told me a long time ago that, that they support R&D, which is rip off and duplicate. <laughs> so, um, so shifting a little bit and I want to get into, I want to talk about social media, mm-hmm. social media platforms. It really is sort of a love-hate thing. We all know the problems. I mean, we here at, at TPPF have yeah. looked at the policy and certainly getting kids off of social media yes. or the bullying and all that kind of stuff love hate relationship and yet at the same time it is an incredibly useful platform for getting your message out um you know Ari, tell us about a little bit about how you guys use social media especially with video um and and you know is it is it a love hate relationship there or you're just going for i think there's a little bit of the love hate but i think um I think if you make sure that we're, what we'd like policy wise is we're saying, you know, this platform might not be for kids, but that's not who our target audience mm-hmm. is. But we can still target younger people. But that just might mean like the 18 to like 30 mid 30s range. Right. So right. Uh, and each platform as well has a different um a different age group and a different demographic that is targeting. So whenever we're like being thoughtful about the way that we're designing our Instagram posts and like leaning into the vertical reels versus um like doing the the, the horizontal with the black uh, yes, like which we we want to learn like... and kind of make that better <laughs> but yeah you're trying to see what is it that these people are gravitating towards and why are they on these social media 
platform. And, and you're not so. taking the same video and putting it across all platforms. I mean, you're 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 deciding what's a clip, what's a reel, what's a YouTube video, what's yes. a, what's a short, what's a you know. And all what of are that. the pieces of um, whenever we're even like clipping certain videos for Instagram? It's like what are the flashy like two second things that people are going to latch mm-hmm. onto on mm-hmm. this platform? Yeah, yeah. We we've been surprised. I mean, I you know it's I mean a lot of times we do things deliberately, you know, thinking or believing that it's going to have some kind of effect. Other times we just say you know hey let's clip this and put it out there and then all of a sudden we get 200,000 views yep. um, on you know literally an eight second clip that's the weird of thing Josh with the Trevino. algorithms and they're also always changing so mm-hmm. it is a it's a science but not one that's well yeah it's just something yeah, it's hard to game to the system mm-hmm. people are always like post at four o'clock on a Tuesday for the most views and it's like okay that's <laughs> out the window that's not gonna happen but so- sometimes it does work and then it depends like which field you're in yeah it's a, it's a Taylor do you have a formula with with social media I mean do you prefer I mean especially for your podcast because mm-hmm. you do have a particular audience that you're trying to market to um, do you have a particular approach or formula that you use in, or different platforms yeah I think for us it's it's really like especially Instagram is so important for for ladies like we just like we are visual creatures we love design even even if like you're a lawyer like they're still probably gonna have like a stunning home with like an amazing couch and so the statistics support that too about like women are the ones who are going to gravitate towards instagram yeah yeah yeah. and so it's so it's like why not give them something that they would just enjoy looking at something that captivates her because if they're looking at it then they're listening to it and then they might implement it and so as far as like our instagram goes it allows us to connect with our personality it allows them to feel like they're a part of our podcast it's very very interesting to see i mean i'll just use a pop culture with the kardashians it's like people feel like they are part of their lives because they are so active on social media like crazy involved like and of course they have their stalkers and stuff but it's just amazing to see like the tool that especially instagram and social media is that the conversation can continue i understand that there's all these negatives to it but like if you're a fully functioning adult and you have self-control like social media is a great tool to connect with other people what about engagement i mean it's one thing to put our stuff out there and to have people just view it or whatever but what do we do um is there a way to market it in a particular way i'm asking either one of you to yeah. kind of jump in is there a way to market it in a particular way that gets people uh particularly the activists more involved i mean and already said you know we do a lot with education that's great but you know we at the end of the day we want to we want to inspire people to get involved yeah. we want to we want to make you know it's, a, it's another way to give us feedback mm-hmm. right that if somebody actually clicks on something or whatever are there tips and tricks and trades of, of, of getting people to, to you know be more active uh, on social media? I think part of it is um, having availability for them to be able to feel like they can speak to you mm-hmm. and you can respond. Mm-hmm. Um, so And that's hard to troubleshoot too with like sometimes <laughs> there's spammers as well on YouTube comments so we've had to make strategic decisions with that. But one thing that we're going to be having on our show is people are going to be able to um, Instagram message us co- uh, questions that they have and we have a section of our show where we're able to answer those as well yeah so i think when people feel like you're giving them the easiest way to engage with you and you can Mm -hmm. respond back that it it like lowers the barrier to entry of of participating we love the haters we love (laughs) we love the folks that come out you know they they, do increase our views a little bit so i'll take it (laughs) if they ain't hating you ain't popping right is that what they say (laughs) that's exactly what we say (laughs) (laughs) that's going to be my my next column (laughs) um uh, taylor for you um is there you know a specific you know way that you get people to try to engage a little bit more especially with your design you know it's one thing to have a a video some shocking video and a reel i mean i get sucked into those all the time with the with the video but but in terms of design getting people to get more engaged yeah i think you know like a really gorgeous just pull quote is great but then beyond that you know having very organic conversations online so that means that if someone comments on your post you need to go in and don't just say like hey thanks you need to be like oh my gosh thank you so much i'm so glad you like this specific part insert name here like Mm -hmm. you need to really connect and then someone responds on the back end on a story and you're not going to get any credit for that on the outside world like you need to connect with that person if they're like oh my gosh i love that hey what did you love about that like tell us more and they're like, oh, like, this is my friend. Like, we have a connection here. And so very much that organic responsiveness online mm-hmm. is so, so important. And that's what gets people fully invested. And once they're invested, they're not going to, it's going to be very hard for them to want to just like because they form lead a the relationship conversation with, yeah. with that thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's also, I think, something that we both do, both in the graphics and on the video side, is we try to attach a call to action yeah. sometimes with our stuff. Mm-hmm. So for on um, like on, on Instagram, a different side, sometimes we're asking them to like press something, to click something. And then on the video end, that's always the question that I ask is, 
what what is this for? So what do we want to get out of this? And can we call them to do something mm -hmm. with this? So it's not just here's information. OK, bye. <laughs> yeah. And then the last little thing I'll say on that is like you, especially for like our sister organizations, like we should really be throwing up things for them to interact on social media like throw the quizzes up make them click the button like get me like let them put in their like two cents on the little mm -hmm. like what do you think about this quote button thing mm -hmm. i'm really good at social media um, <laughs> <Button> thing. <laughs> just find, yeah, where, and where can they find you on social media if you want to have followers i'm sure is there a, is there a sweet tea uh, social we do have media an or? instagram yes okay. and that's okay. the best way to interact with us mm -hmm. we're going to start be uh building that up and we really want to be able to have that line of communication through direct uh, messages for us to be able to answer questions on the show yeah yeah so sweet so tea sweet. has its own channel uh, yes. on youtube it's not a tppf channel you guys have, have got your own channel um and and now you've got your own instagram so people can follow you and yeah. can um, and can see now that they know what you're trying to do to them yeah. behind the scenes uh, they can be we want to be, be your friend informed. guys yeah. we want to <laughs> hang out we want you on the podcast <laughs> well this is awesome this has been great because I love the shameless plug I think I've plugged like five different things uh, here at, at uh, for, for TPPF but it is a it is a great show I've seen the episodes and they are they're really interesting especially somebody coming at it from a and very different perspective and they come out every Friday yeah every Friday and then I would just say like for the parents listening to this like send it to your college girls send it to your daughters send it to your sisters send it yes. to your aunts like pass it around to the girls if, if, if you're a guy listening to this and you're like okay oh, it's not really my cup of tea <laughs> that's fine but like please send it to someone else if you're interested in where else. the women are on the issues you can listen yeah. to yeah. I'll take it yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely we'll take as many listens as we can but that's a really good idea you know especially for, for uh, you know women that have young teenage daughters or young daughters at all and they want to get them more interested or, or at least just to show them an example that like you know this is this is a thing that's out there you yeah. know politics isn't just for the boys I mean if mm -hmm. you want to get more involved or just get more informed on the issue like yeah. you said, Ari, it's sort of later in life that you figured out that you needed to be informed on the issues. Um, this could be an early way to, to, to get it going. Yeah. And then like just on that note, as far as like passing on, like there's been several people we've interviewed who have such good like the daughters have such great relationships with their dad. And I'm definitely one of those girls. <laughs> and so if like you know, my dad's the kind of dad that like if he sees something like this, he would send it to me. Mm -hmm. And it totally changed the trajectory of my life. And I ended up where I am because I think my dad just constantly had those conversations with mm -hmm. me. So dad. Dads, send it to your daughters. Shameless plug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, as a as a dad of a 17 month old daughter, uh, you just hit me right where right, oh. in the warm spot. Yeah, send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Was it no, no, no? Wait, no, no, no. no. She's no screens. She's, sorry, she's 17 months, not years. I'm, I'm currently in the process of taking unsolicited advice on traveling with children that young, <laughs> and literally, I mean, everybody's got their own, you know, you know, tips and trades or tips and tricks or whatever. Everybody has says no screen time because if you start, Good. yeah. Because the attention spans get so much shorter and you're right. not going to be able to yeah and you're and if you give it to them in the first half hour they're stuck watching you know bluey for four hours and just like you know i'm mesmerized. a little bit scared for the future with the rise of the ipad babies that's eventually going to happen mm -hmm. yeah. ipad yeah, yeah like I, you think gen z is bad <laughs> watch out for gen alpha <laughs> you know we had we had myra flores who used to be at tppf she's now a congressional candidate for her old district or whatever and she said on the show she has three young children all under 16 i think like that none of them have cell phones none of them have ipads like they wow. have ipads Respect. in the house and they use them you know it's a dad's ipad and you can use it for a little bit mm -hmm. but none of them i was like how do you do that and i mean if you ever met myra flores she just is like i, I, I just tell them she's yeah. so good <laughs> yeah she just says i just tell them and that's it like that's how you know you got to institute that kind of discipline uh, not to do that so uh, respect for her I have tremendous respect for her because it's already tough you know yeah. we're already you know, and if she... everyone else is doing it it's hard to be able to tell your child no you exactly. can't be like everyone yeah. else yeah, who has the peer this. pressure of it yeah. all um, alright well this has been awesome I love getting kind of outside the box and uh, and not having to talk about current events necessarily all the time and I love that we've kind of shifted over now that we're out of session we're going to be having more guests and things like that so you know if you guys ever want to have a you know have me or Derek or something on your show we'd have love a to cross, dude on yeah. the pod is that think you're not going to have any guys on the show is it just no, we're, totally, women, yeah, yeah. we're totally open women's to it clubhouse for women only is that what it is no it's it's totally open and our instagram is spilling sweet tea so spilling please tea. like and with follow with the g at the end spilling sweet spilling sweet, spilling sweet, sweet tea, tea. Mm, okay good. all right you good, heard good. it there spilling sweet tea <laughs> sweet tea podcast of course we have ariana silva and taylor dawson who are the hosts of the sweet tea podcast thank you guys for for being with us uh that's all the time we have for now thank you for watching thank you for listening and as always do good and risk the consequences we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs>